Well, let's discuss all this now with Joshua Landis, who's the Director of Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. He's joining us from Oklahoma City. Thank you so much for being with us on Al, Jaz Al Jazeera. We, we heard there a very stern warning from the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., uh, to Israel, over its conduct in Gaza. But in the last year, we've seen so many of the U.S.'s so-called red lines being crossed. Is there a point, is this the point, actually, where the U.S. says stop to Israel? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, the U.S. has given a timeline of over a month. And uh, and this this is troubling because it comes after the elections. And this is really about the elections for the United States. To have a humanitarian disaster, widespread starvation in Gaza would be uh, a real disaster for candidate um, Harris because her polling numbers have begun to decline. And this is, um, this is what I think is troubling her at this point. So what will happen after the election, you think? Well, uh, I don't think there's going to be a major change. But clearly, if she wins the election, she will be able to, I think, deal with, uh, with Israel in a little bit more, in a little tougher manner. Right now, both candidates are scrambling to get donations. And the billionaire donors are really driving uh, both sides. Uh, the, the, the newspapers today in the United States are full of stories about mega donors, such as the Sheldons who've given to, um, to Trump, or Musk who's given to Trump almost $100 million each. So that, the, these are the stories that are underlining this the whole time. And it's very important for both candidates to keep good relations with Israel. But at the same time, Kamala Harris does not want to have a giant humanitarian meltdown in Gaza uh, just before the elections, because Arab voters and many other young Americans are uh, really disconcerted and, and, and heartbroken at what they're seeing coming out of Gaza. Yeah. Moving away from, from U.S. politics and, and coming back to the situation yes. in, in Gaza itself and, and what Israel has been doing there, do you think the humanitarian situation in the north, which is very dire, as we heard during that U.N. Security Council meeting today, will it force Israel to reassess its military strategy? I think it will, it will cause Israel to increase aid uh, just enough so that they can avoid uh, the kind of disaster that the administration is asking them to avoid. But they're not, Israel's plan for Gaza seems to be uh, one of endless war and real whole scale destruction of, of Palestinian life as it existed. And that does not seem to be halted. And, and we know that the Iran chapter is just waiting to unfold. Mm. And until we see the fallout from Iran, there's not going to be any kind of a, a ceasefire, I don't think, in Lebanon right. or in Gaza. And, and so what about the situation in Lebanon? How much does Washington support what appears to be uh, Israel's attempt to uh, reoccupy southern Lebanon, some have said, and even reshape the entire Lebanese political system? Well, that's the million dollar question. And, and during the first days, it looked like the United States administration was trying to restrain Israel and asking for a very limited operation. But then it got on board uh, with Israel's grandiose uh, claims to rebuild Lebanon and that this was an opportunity for Lebanese to form a new government, to destroy Hezbollah and to really push Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon to, to reimpose or to resend the, the, the Lebanese army back to the south and uh, to change the balance of power within Lebanon. And, and unfortunately, it looks like the United States has bought in to this idea that they can reshape Lebanese politics. Thank you for speaking to us about this, Joshua Landis. Joshua Landis uh, from the University of Oklahoma, joining us there from Oklahoma City. Thank you very much for joining us on Al Jazeera. Pleasure. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.